What's up guys, Derek, more please, more today we're going to be talking about how to cold approach women without losing any of your free time. So this is um, something that is difficult to do. You know, when you first get into this, it is a, it's a fucking full-time job, let's be honest. Like trying to learn how to get women, even if you're good at it and you're just doing online, it's a fucking time-consuming process to message people, go back and forth, do the small talk, you know, set up dates, do this, do that, all to get to the same blueprint you've essentially set up for every single interaction that leads to the same outcome but with different people and the obviously the experience is different because they're different people. So, um, you know, I'm not trying to come across as a fucking uh, like serial data robot here. But what I'm trying to say is the fact that this stuff gets pretty repetitive after a while. And once you have a system in place, you kind of start to create habits of how you do things. And it's essentially just like a formula being repeated over and over again. When you first start, though, you don't have this formula or this blueprint. You don't know what works for you. You don't know how you should divvy up your time between online dating, between night game, between day game, between social circle game, if that's even a fucking thing for you. At the end of the day, how you should divvy up your time. If you have good social circles and you're at parties and stuff, social circle game, social circle game is good to leverage. But if you don't, I, I shouldn't say you should write it off actually, because I actually have a really good post on how to create social circles in a very short period of time which I highly recommend you check out. I'll put a card up in the description or in the fucking screen somewhere. And this basically details if you are a student. This works if you're at a university or a college, basically, and you're you know trying to build up a massive social circle or several social circles of hot girls very quickly. This is how you can go about doing it, even if you don't know anyone. So definitely do that if you're in that situation. But this it's a bit different if you're not in school, you're not in a like high volume environment for uh social interaction like if you're you're an adult and you're going to like the fucking gym and the grocery store it's kind of hard to leverage the same strategy as i outlined in that video so in general the majority of you guys who are watching are going to fall into should i be doing night game should i be doing day game should i be doing online dating that's kind of like the main thing and for online dating if you have great pictures and you're good looking then by all means lean into that Take all the crutches you can. Don't feel like you have to, you know, only fucking, you know, you're not a player if you can't pull at nighttime. Like, it's just stupid. So, like, if you have fun doing it, do it. And honestly, I feel like you should experience success in all areas because if you don't, you're going to, you know, lack confidence in yourself when it comes down to it. A lot of guys, they, you know, they'll only sit on fucking tinder and that's all they do and that every single lay they get through their entire existence comes from tinder and it's like if you've never gone to a club and like met a chick cold who's sober and isn't a disaster and is actually hot and you've talked to from start to finish and got her back to your place and gone from a to z from cold interaction to in your bed honestly you have to do it at least a few times in my opinion or else you're going to doubt, doubt yourself and your own so social skills moving forward as well as day game i think you have to you know get that off your plate too even if you're not leaning on it heavily um and that's just for building your social iq in my opinion but it's getting a bit off track um how do you divvy up your time and in terms of day game specifically how do you make it efficient because realistically, you're going to get to the point where you know what's most efficient for you. And I've talked about how I feel like every guy should know how to cold approach though, regardless if you are leaning on day game, regardless if you're leaning on online game or not. Online is obviously the most time efficient. You can just blast out, cut and paste messages to people. And if you have good enough pictures, you're going to kill it. That's just how it works. But for building out your actual social IQ, for business presentations, for social gatherings for anything that involves you being a high quality communicator you need to get good get good at cold approaching whether it's at nighttime or daytime in my opinion daytime is the easiest because you can integrate it on the go and this is where we get into how to cold approach women without <laughs> wasting your time which is the whole fucking title of the video and i'm taking too long to get to it when you first start you're going to have to do exposure therapy and put yourself into situations where you actually dedicate blocks of time to it. So this is something that a lot of players, like high tier guys who get laid a lot, will shit on you for because they'll say, oh, you know, like sarging is stupid. Oh, you should never go like dedicate blocks of time to approaching. That's just dumb. Like going to the mall is fucking horrible. And 
I agree. However, when you're just starting, it's completely impossible to expect a newbie to be able to integrate the efficient day game model I'm about to outline into their everyday life. So the efficient day game model is during your everyday errands, during your whatever you're doing that involves you leaving the house, every time you come across a hot girl who you've never talked to, you go talk to her, strike up a conversation, get to know her a bit, get her number, set up a date. That is the approach. That's it. And the reason why it's so good is because it doesn't involve you dedicating a block of time to approaching. Rather, it's simply you doing your regular activities throughout your day and you just so happen to have run into somebody during that process, which you can then approach. But you weren't going out of your way to find them. You just are on the ball because you've done this a shit ton of times in the past with those dedicated time blocks where now when you see girls on the drop of a hat, you're not a pussy and you can go up to them in less than a split second and go talk to them. Whereas if you're completely new to this on paper, it sounds like, oh, that's not that hard. You know, when I'm at the grocery store, I see a hot chick down the aisle. I just go up and talk to her for a couple minutes, get her number and I leave. Sounds a lot easier saying it than it is doing it. I assure you that. Like when I first started, I used to go out with a guy who was doing this regularly himself. It took me three what was it, two days of me watching him do it and me feeling pressured as fuck in my head to do it in order to match what he was doing. If I went out by myself without anyone there to push me, I probably wouldn't have done anything for a full week. Even after I stopped going out with him to do the cold approaches and I found myself at my university doing the cold approaches myself, interestingly enough, I found a mental block where I couldn't do the cold approaches because I didn't have someone there peer pressuring me to do them that I had to keep up with. And then that took me a couple days to get over. And then once I got into it, you know, I got into the groove of it and it was fine. But expecting you on day one to be able to go out and do your errands, go to the gym, go to classes, go to, uh, I don't fucking know. What do you do for errands? Go to, uh, the dry cleaner. I don't know. What do you do? Like you tell me whatever you go to do on a daily basis, whatever chicks you run into expecting you to at the drop of a hat, just be able to go talk to them and have a good conversation is unreasonable. And anybody who is like a coach or a whatever the PUA coaches are nowadays, I don't know if that's still a, uh, still a industry being uh, leveraged that people are making money on, but no reasonable coach would expect somebody to do that because it's just fucking insane. Like your first approach is gonna be so shaky. You're probably barely gonna speak English. You're gonna have broken incoherent sentences. <laughs> you're gonna be scared out of your mind and it's impossible for you to do it. And you're like, you're probably gonna have people peer pressuring you to do it too. It's like, you know, had like shoving your fucking like little brother into the double Dutch jump rope and him getting slapped in the face. Like that's literally the equivalent of what cold approaching is for the first time in the daytime in the middle of, you know, it's so weird, like talking to some hot chick in the middle of the daytime. No one does that. That's so strange. That's creepy. It's like, no dude, if you look good enough, it's not creepy at the end of the day. And if you're smooth and you talk to them and you seem like you can form a coherent conversation with them, that is mildly interesting. It's not creepy. So, at the end of the day, do the dedicated blocks of approaching. Like you're gonna have to get that out of your system to get to a point where you have zero approach anxiety. Once you have zero approach anxiety, the most time efficient way is to integrate this into your everyday life. So this is me when I'm going to the grocery store. I just so happen to see some chick, you know, shopping for Greek yogurt. What do you know? I'm there for Greek yogurt too. This is always my example for some reason. It's always Greek yogurt at the grocery store. Go up to her, introduce her, introduce yourself. What's your opener? Doesn't fucking matter. To be honest, you say, hi, you don't overthink it. You've done this a bunch of times because you've done all the dedicated blocks of approaching in the past and you've got your social anxiety out the window to the point where you can go up to talk to girls at the drop of a hat. If you haven't done this block, you're going to see that chick. You're going to overthink it for 15 seconds. You're going to think, oh shit, I'm too creepy. You're going to circle around. You're going to look at her a million times. You're going to do a lap. You're going to go back. You're going to fucking get in your own head and you're just not going to do it or it's going to be the most sloppy approach of all time and you're just going to have it explode in your face. You don't want that to happen. Get the get the blocks of time out of your system as young as possible because this is when you can this is when it's acceptable socially to have this shit blow up in your face and go, you know, knock out fucking 30 approaches in a day and not be seen as uh like a fucking predator. So, get that out of your system and then get to a point where you can integrate this into your everyday life. And then it's not so creepy 
because you're not dedicating blocks of time to it, it's actually pretty socially accepted, I think, for a good looking guy to just so happen to see a good looking girl and talk to her versus, you know, tit for tat, fucking approaching a chick, blowing it out, approaching a chick beside her, blowing it out, approaching a set over here, blowing it out, running across the fucking thing, doing a weird like anxiety exercise, blowing it out. That's not what you wanna be doing. You wanna get that shit out of your system as young as possible and you get to the point where you can do the cold approach, efficient process of everyday life, integrating your approaches into your schedule, which is, you know, not as high volume as it would be if you're dedica dedicating blocks of time to it, but that's the whole point is you're not dedicating blocks of time to it and your conversion rate is a lot higher and you are going for high quality girls only. And then you're supplementing that on top of your online dating or your night game. If online dating is not your uh, forte and you don't have good enough pictures, you're probably gonna have to supplement the night game with the online dating with the day game. You might even need to do blocks of time of online of day game too. If you have like, uh, you know, not that good of, uh, you're not maxed out in all of your, you know, categories that you could be in terms of style, body composition, um, hygiene, whatever it is that you may be lacking in. And at that point, if you're not getting success in any of the categories, even though you're going heavy duty in all of them, then you kind of just got to take a step back and take a bit of time for yourself and, you know, figure out what's wrong because something's wrong if you're not getting results. If you do a hundred approaches and you don't get laid once, there's a fucking issue. So honestly, the market will tell you how well you're doing. You don't need guys to critique you although it can help to point out what you may be overlooking. If you're not getting results online, you don't have good enough pictures. If you're not getting results in day game, your game is shitty or you don't look good or something. Nighttime, same thing. It's not rocket science. You just got to get out there, put in the fucking work and it's a numbers game. And if you look good enough and you have good enough game, the numbers are in your favor. So just keep that in mind and take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, drop a comment. Helps the algorithm when you guys comment. It's very much appreciated when you guys do that. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, anything I am associated with is in the video description below my TRT clinic. If you are looking for testosterone replacement therapy, HRT, um, or any kind of hormone optimization in general, check them out. It's all telemedicine from the convenience of your own home, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom. Basically, you just uh, submit your information, get a consultation request in, our patient care coordinators will link up with you and go over your blood work A to Z, address any imbalances or deficiencies you may have, and then connect you with our doctors, which will then prescribe you the according medications to address your current health status and optimize your performance and your health. And then on top of that, if you want to support uh, Gorilla Mind, my pre-workout formulas and my uh, cognitive enhancing nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mind Rush, Gorilla Mind Smooth, those are the formulas I developed throughout my university years, I'm going into my working years to knock out 16 plus hour work days. I don't necessarily recommend 16 hour work days, to be honest, they're pretty fucking mentally taxing. But if you are doing something that requires a high level of focus, attention, um, creativity even, just being locked in for more time than you would otherwise be capable of it. These nootropic formulas are the best on the market for that. Pre-workout formula, self-explanatory, what those are, just compare the label of your current pre to mine. You'll see pretty quickly why Gorilla Mode, uh, the stimulant-based one, as well as Gorilla Mode Nitric, the stimulant-free pre-workout formula, or the top pre-workout formulas in the industry right now, in my opinion in my humble opinion, <laughs> but I sit, I consider these the top notch just based on the fact that the combinations of ingredients as well as the dosages is kind of transparent and obvious in my opinion, how they stack up the other products that people are buying. So, you know, just compare the labels and see for yourself. I recommend you give it a shot if you are somebody who uh, uses those products and anything else I'm associated with video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.